Good morning. Thank you all for joining us today. We're just going to give another half a minute or so for people to jump on and join. Okay. Good morning, everybody, and thank you for joining us this morning for a behind the scenes an in-depth view of Microsoft Teams. Um, before we jump in, I want to share a couple of quick housekeeping items with you. Uh, to increase activity throughout the event, we will have a few polling questions for you, so please participate in the fun. Uh, questions are encouraged. If you have questions, please submit those in the chat section. We will get to as many questions as we can at the end of the webinar. If for some reason we are unable to get to your question, we will hook up with you offline, either through phone, a phone call or email, and answer those questions um, offline. As always, we record all of our online events and make them available to attendees within about two to three days of the live event. Um, we will be also making those recordings available on our website at netgeenit.com under the resources section. That's it for housekeeping items. Now let's flip to introductions. My name is Megan Reed. I am the VP of Marketing at NetGain Technologies, and I am joined today by one of our Microsoft Teams resident experts, Caroline Wood. Thank you, Megan. So I work at NetGain as a marketing administrator. I work with a number of different platforms and tools for events, digital marketing campaigns, and uh, various marketing projects. So I've got background experience in database management and supporting others in their use of communication and information platforms. Uh, for Microsoft Teams specifically, I have provided Teams training to various NetGain clients and groups. Um, in my opinion, Teams offers a lot of great resources for connecting and collaborating um, across your employee base. And um, I speak from personal experience, which um, I will attest to in this webinar. Uh, I use Teams every day in different ways, and it's become one of my favorite communication platforms. So thank you, Megan. Yeah, and I definitely echo that. We use it a lot here at NetGain and a lot in the marketing department here. So before we jump into the live Teams demo, um, I do want to briefly just talk about why platforms like Microsoft Teams are so important in today's workforce. And I think it's probably not even necessary at this point to mention the fact that the past few years have increasingly forced companies to embrace the digital world. In 2022, 65% of workers are working fully in person. That's actually up 5% from 2021. Um, and while the, I think there's 11% that are working fully remotely, which is down 11% from 2021. And I, while those numbers have shifted in favor of in-person work over the last year or so, there's still about 35% of today's workforce that is working in some sort of hybrid or fully remote model which just continues to exacerbate the need for good collaboration tools like Teams. Um, Caroline, what are you seeing on the productivity and work-life balance side? Yeah, thanks, Megan. So um, in terms of productivity and work-life balance, uh, people are reporting a higher level of job satisfaction with remote work. So that's great. People are kind of finding their flow, if you will, with this shift in um, kind of workplace um, situations and capacities. Employees with flexible work options are reporting better work-life balance and greater job satisfaction. Um, most fully remote employees or workers are quite satisfied with their jobs, so that's a positive. Um, and as far as the job market is concerned, it's definitely becoming more of an expectation for businesses that they offer um, different options and flexibility for remote and hybrid work setup. So um, most workers expect there to be some sort of hybrid work arrangement for these jobs. And I would say this is relevant in most industries, probably not all, but most. Yeah, I think that's a, a really good point. And as we've been recruiting just for various marketing positions at NetGain um, over the last couple of years, we've been able to expand our talent pool and look for the best person to do the job no matter their location. And I think even specifically in some of those interviews and in those candidate interviews, I get questions about work-life balance and the strictness or lack thereof of working a traditional eight to five workday. 
Um, now, I am aware, and as Caroline mentioned, you know, that doesn't work for every single position, um, but it can work for some. So it's definitely something to consider as you're looking for talent and, and trying to fill positions moving forward. Um, so yeah, I think that that's, that's super important. Um, as organizations across all industries are starting to embrace or are embracing more tools and applications to bolster their productivity and, and remote and hybrid work models, I'd like for you, Caroline, to just talk briefly about the different types of tools in this space. Yeah, most definitely. So from independent startups to large technology, like enterprise size companies, there's definitely a growing number of tools available for shifting our teams, our employees, um, and their options for collaboration into the digital world. So some tools have more limited collaboration features where it might focus solely on like group chat or messenger function, whereas others might offer like a full suite of tools for file sharing, file storage, video conferencing, live call and chat features, and even calendar management all in one. So um, as with um, any sort of application, they come with different price tags and demands from users. So um, typically they'll follow like a tiered pricing model where uh, obviously if you pay more, you get more access to tools or even like storage capabilities. So um, something to definitely keep in mind when you're exploring new uh, communication platforms some tools are entirely free to use, and um, that can be a great option if you want to explore maybe more of the basic functions of an app or to just get a general look and feel of what is this app all about and um, do I want to add it to my tech stack. Um, many businesses have found leveraging one or maybe like a couple of tools versus multiple applications has enabled their teams to work more efficiency, efficiently. Um, I would say it's about balance and finding the right tool or tools that fit your team. Um, sometimes it can be exciting and a little thrilling to see all of these different options, all of these different tools, and especially if a lot of them um, you can try out for free, even for like a trial period. Um, it's very tempting to just pick and poke and add them all to your tech stack because they, um, you know, could offer you more ways of creating efficiencies or better communicating, collaborating, even working on projects, but um, you might, might get a little lost in the mix of things and it can definitely cause distractions for your people and for yourself. So I would challenge anyone to just maybe keep it simple, especially in the early stages of things. Thanks, Megan. Yeah, yeah. I, think that's, I think that's good advice um, because there are, as you can see, just this this space especially has been inundated over the last couple of years, even particularly um, new softwares, new things popping up, um, and they can do various pieces. Um, some of them can do the whole kit and caboodle um, if they if they built it that way. Some don't. So I think, um, as I mentioned, I wanted to throw some polls in here. Wanted to make this interactive. So we want to ask the audience, which, if any, collaboration tool does your organization use? Um, I, we've got Zoom, Skype, Teams, Slack, none of the above or other. Obviously at NetGain, um, we use Microsoft Teams. However, I've used Slack lightly through some groups that I'm a part of. I've used Skype and Jabber and Google Docs. And what I like most about Teams is that it includes all the necessary features um, that you require in a collaboration tool. And if you need more features, there's always additional apps that can integrate nicely with it. Um, so just give another second or two because we got responses still coming in, um, but I'm going to go ahead and close down this poll and share our results. So it looks like the majority of the team here is using Microsoft Teams. So that's great. We want to make sure that we get into <laughs> all the nitty gritty details about Teams today um, that we can, that we can cover in this at least one hour session. So thank you so much for sharing that with us. Um, I am going to ask Caroline to now kind of take over the screen so that she can uh, show Microsoft Teams and that platform. Um, it is an application that has transformed how businesses operate, particularly over the last couple of years. Um, as mentioned, it is also a tool that NetGain leverages heavy for, heavily for our own means of connecting with one another while we work in this hybrid work capacity. Um, and prior to Teams, 
the marketing team here actually used email to share documents back and forth, SharePoint, Jabber, WebEx, Google Docs. Um, so it's nice to be able to have it all in one platform now. So I'm going to hand it over to Caroline here to give us a, a deep dive into Teams. Thanks, Megan. I am excited. So as you can see on my screen, we are in Microsoft Teams. So to begin, um, I'm going to direct everyone's attention to this left-hand menu over here. And this really details kind of the main components and tools within Teams. So uh, quick note, there's a lot of customization options within Teams, subtle, but um, significant to kind of curate your experience with the platform to um, better organize some of these features and tools to fit your needs. Um, as well as even your company needs too. So um, quick note, all of these icons over here are movable. Um, so you do have the option to shift the order around of even these you know, little icons here. And then you've got um, some additional functions similar to that um, across teams. So you also have um, some other setting and menu options at the top of your screen here too. Um, to keep in mind of a very small, but very powerful tool is this search bar right here. Um, and essentially, you can use this to navigate in and out of teams across the board, and you can do a lot with this search bar. Um, just reading this here, you can look for messages, files, and more, or type the um, forward slash for a list of commands. And you're actually able to chat with people right in the search bar. Um, you can look for maybe some recent unread messages and whatnot. So um, I would say this is like a subtle but um, significant feature that might go maybe a little bit overlooked um, within Teams. And then you also have um, some additional options here, too, of accessing different menus with um, ellipsis for general um, menu settings, as well as your personal profile. Um, fairly straightforward. Um, teams looks and feels like a lot of other applications. So um, I would say transitioning to Teams or even between platforms um, should be fairly seamless if you've got um, any sort of background or experience with communication platforms. But I digress. Hopefully I won't get off on too many tangents. I get excited talking about this stuff sometimes. But um, bringing it back, um, to begin, we are going to start with um, our first icon over here, which is Teams. And within a team, you can organize projects, files, you can run chats and meetings with team members, um, all within just this one tool. So Teams can be large or small, depending upon their function and their purpose. Um, you can add people to your team at any time. You can also remove people as needed. Um, you can create more channels and you can even access different informational tools for troubleshooting or different ex exploration on your own. So um, adding more people, let's actually do that right now, is very simple. Um, and all you have to do is just type in a name got Megan and I'm adding her to my team. And even from here, you've got some additional options too as to um, adjusting maybe some privileges. Um, very quick, very simple right there. So voila, now we've got a member to our team. Um, let's have a party together, Megan. Maybe I'll share some documents later. I don't, I don't think we'll have time for that, but I wanted to show just how quick and simple that option is. Um, and then you also have some additional options, too, to create more organization within your team through channels. And this is kind of an option to maybe compartmentalize the content you house within your team. So um, channel option here, maybe you want to add a channel for a specific project, an upcoming event, maybe um, your quarterly goals. You want to use a specific channel to house maybe conversations, documents. Um, projects, reports, you've got that option too for channels, um, and you even have options to limit access to channels amongst the members of your team. So say for instance, you've got a team that has 100 members, maybe not everybody needs to be involved in all of the different channels. Um, you've got some different privacy options here too, where um, you can select certain team members to be able to access and view those channels. So something to keep in mind there. 
Um, the options really are kind of endless for um, team customization, which can be great, but can also be a little overwhelming. So it might be good to kind of map out um, your general goals and ideas for your team before you actually start creating it. But sometimes you just kind of got to go with the flow. But uh, I'm going to click on this ellipsis here to kind of show you what some of those options look like. Um, so, you know, there's a lot of different ways to access these um, different features throughout Teams. So don't feel like um, if you forget where something's located, that's the only place it is. There's a lot of overlapping features, which we'll go through as we're doing this um, kind of dive together. But anyway, I digress. So here you've got options for managing your team. You can add a channel here, um, edit. You yourself can choose to leave a team, or um, if you've got that owner kind of privilege, you can. Um, opt like other people out of teams too. So um, lots of customization options there and um, lots of options for also adjusting access and privileges for um, who can add members, access documents, that kind of information too. Yeah, and we've gotten a number of questions that have already come in. Caroline, I want to address one of them because it goes to, to mm. what I was going to add in here. Um, they, they asked, if you have someone who previously worked for you as the owner on a team, how do you change that to a different owner? That was actually going to be my recommendation because we've learned it the hard way too, as far as like be sure that you have multiple owners um, of a channel. That way, if a team member leaves, if a team member is on PTO, whatever the case may be, you can quickly and easily add or subtract members from those teams. Um, I think if you've already gone down the route and you only have one owner and that person is no longer there, um, I would assume that you'd probably be able to get with your internal IT team or whoever um, manages admin. your team's application and, and is the admin, thank you, Caroline, of that, they would be able to add owners um, to existing channels throughout. So that would be my, my recommendation. Mm -hmm. um, what I would like Caroline, before we move on necessarily, I did get one other that I want you to go ahead and address, um, which is what is a channel? Yes, so um, how you could organize teams, it's um, maybe kind of view it in layers. So um, at the top, you've got a team, and then within a team, you have channels for kind of organizing um, different chats and features. So I'm, as you can see on my screen right here, um, channels are kind of optional, um, but it's basically a way to narrow down your focus for different things that you're working on. So for instance, with NetGain Marketing here, we've got all kinds of channels because we're kind of working on all kinds of things. So um, here we've got different um, channels for appreciation events, um, mailer campaigns, even um, executive luncheon events, that kind of information. Um, looking into other teams, our company Water Cooler, we've got different channels for maybe different topics that um, we want to share content or information about. So um, this is where there's a lot of opportunity for customization on your end. What do you want your channels to look like? Um, and even within channels, um, you do have some options to pin certain ones to the top. Uh, I'm kind of going off on a side tangent, but there's, there's a lot of options with channels, <laughs> to say the least. Um, you can add this, uh, specific notifications for channels too, like if one is maybe more of a priority and you want to get alerts on a channel for activity for documents being added, chat notifications, that kind of thing. Um, you've got those options there too. Um, and then there's even customization within channels for different features and tools you have for your channel. So right here at the top, this is a general channel. It's just kind of straight out of the gate. That's what's added when you create a team. Um, but you've got options for um, expanding this um, kind of a uh, access panel for different tools. I'm going to hit this plus sign and we are going to get a pop-up of different tab options. So once again, kind of hard because you like all these shiny tools, don't get too lost in things, but maybe there's a specific channel you want to create for a project you're working on for you know, the coming month and say you want to add a project management tool within that channel. This is where your integrations come into play. Um, so you've got all kinds of different options here for app integrations. And also within the Microsoft Office 
household. I don't know why I'm using my hands, but <laughs> explaining things. Um, you've got a lot of options to create even um, a tab at the top for um, Word documents if you want that quick access to a Microsoft app. You can even do that within a channel too. I hope that yep. answers your question. There's a lot of opportunity for variability and customization with channels, but essentially it's a better way of enabling you to organize your team and anything and everything that you're housing within that team. That's all I got. Man. Perfect. I'm, <laughs> there's numerous other ones. I can keep going, but we're we're going to be short on time, so continue on. We're gonna we're gonna flip it over. I think to the, the chat section at this point. Yeah, yeah, I'll try to be quick with things. So um, the chat feature, I mean, this is barely straightforward within Teams. It functions like um, really any other instant messenger platform. Um, you can send simple or really complex messages with some of these fun little features like GIFs and emojis, little stickers here too. So there's there's options to kind of have fun with things, um, you know, but chat can be formal or informal. Uh, depending upon the group and maybe how your organization might place stipulations on usage of, of this feature, if any. Um, so right up here, I've got um, the next game monthly branch gathering. This is actually a meeting and the chat tied to that meeting. Um, and this kind of gives you a, a view on how maybe chats can have a little bit of fun into the mix of your day-to-day -day, uh, business operations. But um, it's it's fun to see that kind of opportunity with teams to be able to um, connect with people in sort of different ways through, you know, really just a, a simple kind of feature like chat. Um, something else I want to pop out or um, uh, highlight, if you will, is this um, chat with yourself option up here at the top of my screen. So this is a newer feature um, within Teams that was introduced within, you know, the past like few months, if you will. Um, and this is kind of an option to um, send yourself messages, files, uh, notes, um, and media uh, to kind of help yourself stay organized. Um, and you can pin this to the top of your screen. As you can see, I've got pinned and um, these down here just based on order of recency. Um, and once again, click and drag function, I can put it at the top. Um, and I can also unpin it too if I don't want like want to see it regularly. But um, anyway, this um, chat to self option is really great because um, historically, what I would do if I wanted to maybe open a document on like a different computer or um, remind myself of something, I would do it via Outlook. Um, but now I can do it all within Teams. Um, you can even see in my chat history, I like messaged myself um, a receipt to post on my expenses for the month. Um, so instead of having to make an email, attach the file, send it to myself, open it up, save it locally, post it, whatnot, I can just do it all within Teams. And I've got Teams in my phone, so it's just add picture, send, good to go. So that's a feature I kind of want to highlight there. <laughs> Yeah, I think that one of the things, sorry, I was looking at the questions. Um, one of the things that I really like about the chat yourself feature is that a, a lot of marketers have actually what's called like a swipe file. And it's essentially a collection of, of writings like emails, landing pages, advertisements, and so on to reference um, when they when they need ideas and can spark spark ideas. So the chat with yourself feature serves as sort of the basis for my own swipe file. Um, a good example of this is when I find LinkedIn posts or articles or things online that I want to um, share with the team. Sometimes I'll do that research and find things on like a Saturday or a Sunday on the weekend and I don't really want to disrupt my team's um, or my coworkers' weekends with information about work. So I'll chat it to myself and then when I come in on Monday morning, I see it at the top and I'm like, oh yeah, I wanted to, to share that with the team. So then I'll, I'll share it at that point in time when it's actually work hours so it, it's nice um from that standpoint you don't have to interrupt other other teammates weekends but it gives you a good um a good opportunity to look back and and make sure that you don't miss anything that you want to share with additional teammates so just a little a little tidbit of info that i like to use it for yeah i think that's a great call out megan there's a lot of great um like little small features within um chat that I think are um, pretty powerful, especially if you use it like kind of as often as we do. Um, another feature that I want to 
point out is the pop-out feature. Um, as you can see on my screen, I've got all kinds of different chats going, and uh, some of these chats are with groups of people, and they kind of pop off sometimes. People get real chatty, and I'm like, I'm trying to focus on my document, and I can't keep going back and forth to see if, like, oh, is that a significant note? But um, you've got the pop-out option to where you can separate your group or individual chats into a separate window, which is nice. That way you can still focus on your document and then kind of keep an eye on these side conversations or notes that are taking place kind of behind the scenes with other people chatting or whatnot. So that's something else to keep in mind. Um, another thing of note is there's several options to access other communication tools within the chat section of Teams itself, like uh, for instance, up here, um, this one is actually a chat within a group meeting, but you've got an option to join the meeting from the chat feature. Um, I'll pop over to Jake, who is um, one of my coworkers, and from our chat together, I can actually have an option to hop on a video call with him right then, or um, I can even add additional people to our chat. Say, for instance, we're um, talking about troubleshooting maybe like a situation within one of the other platforms we're using. I'm like, you know what? I would really appreciate Megan's insight on this. Um, in this little chat that we've got going on, I can add her to the chat um, at any point too. So um, some additional but um, subtle features to be aware of with the chat feature. Yeah, I really, I was actually responding to one of the questions over here. Is is there an easy uh, way to send multiple people a message at the same time to bring in a group text? And I mm -hmm. say totally yes. Um, you can easily yeah. chat with multiple people at a time, simply start a new chat. Um, or if you have the person in there, like she's showing Jake right here, you can go up and add a person um, in the top right, or she's clicking over to start a, a new chat and she, you can type in multiple people's yeah. names. Once you get the multiple people yeah. in there, then you can go down and type your message, hit enter, hit send. Um, and you've got your group chat right there. So it's very easy to, to spin up a, a quick group chat. Um, mm -hmm. One of the other things that I really like in chat is when I've gone back and forth in a couple of messages or, um, you know, you learn that you're having a conversation and it takes more than two responses. It's like, let's just jump on a quick five minute phone call and we can hash yeah. this out and, and move on with our day. So I use the, the click to call and the click to video call daily in my life, um, in my work life, so that I can quickly and easily have that conversation and, and move on to the next task at that point in time. Yeah, yeah, that's a great call out there, Megan. And um, I know that's something that we do regularly, actually. It's, it's almost like I've got a measure, like, if the chat goes beyond like three or four messages, I'm just going to hop on a call with her. So it's, it's a great um, feature to be able to um, just be able to do it all within one space and not have to hop between different things or pull up my phone to call somebody. Um, I can do it all within um, like the same window, if you will. Um, mm -hmm. I'm going to move us right along because I know we've got lots of questions coming in. So I'll try to make, uh, I'll try to be quick with some of these next tools that we talk about. So the calendar tool is the next one on our list. And the calendar uh, integrates directly with your Outlook or your Office 365 uh, calendar directly. So you can schedule a meeting out of Teams or Outlook, and they're gonna sync together, and you can hop into the meeting from either platform. Um, you can send out meeting invites here with this um, new meeting option, and you can connect immediately with um, others really at any point with um, the Meet, Meet Now tool. So um, a little more insight into the Meet, fa Meet new meeting options uh, so many meetings. Um, if you click this drop down arrow, you can see some additional options for queuing up um, even a webinar or a live event. Um, it depends on the purpose of your meeting. Uh, Teams has a variety of options for setting up even host and attendee privileges with different settings for each. So something to be aware of there. I know, um, for instance, like the webinar option was something added um, just within the past couple of years within Teams, um, if there was an increased need for these platforms as everybody's going like hybrid and remote. So um, I know there's, they're continually expanding on these meeting options and meeting tools too. So they've added some fun ones into the mix recently, um, 
with um, different like uh, video set up to view everybody who's attending. You can see in like a little like little group setting. It's kind of fun. But um, uh, moving right along, we've also got this um, meet now um, function, and that's a feature you're not going to see in Outlook. But it can be a great to, um, tool to use to pull up with your folks really at the drop of the hat. If you want to run maybe more of an ad hoc meeting, um, it's kind of similar to what Megan was pointing out with the chat function of like calling up somebody immediately. Um, but this is nice because you also have this um, get a link to share feature. Um, and that's something that you can share with, you know, colleagues either inside or outside of your organization um, to meet with you via Teams at any time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think the the meet me option is a really good one, especially if you're having a conversation and you have somebody external from the organization or someone who who doesn't natively have teams. So you can click that meet me button, get that link, ship it off to the person that you need, um, and quickly jump on a phone call together. Um, if it's just like internal, I typically don't use the meet me because I'll just go straight to the chat and call from there yeah. um, to the person that I need to. And even if it's a group call, like if it's, if I need to talk to Caroline and uh, Jake, who she was showing earlier at the same time, I have a group message with them. So I'll just go to that group message, hit the call button, it calls both of them at the same time. And um, they just have to answer. <laughs> but, but aside from that, yeah. um, it, it's very, very useful and, and quick and, and simple. Mm -hmm. um, and there's also some additional features too within um, this calendar option as well of being able to like once again I pointed out there's a lot of overlapping features so even within the calendar tool you also got the chat function so for instance I'm going to click on this um, climate appreciation planning um, here I can hop into the meeting directly I can make edits to when the meeting might be scheduled um, you can get a direct link if you want to invite other people to attend just to be a link um, and then you've also got this option to chat with participants here within the meeting, which can be great because sometimes I've got days where I've got meetings back to back to back and one might be running a little bit long and I can pop up this chat and message my team to say, hey, meetings running a little bit long, might be a few, you know, couple minutes late, but I'll hop on as soon as I can. So um, that's another uh, pretty cool tool or um, capability within just the calendar function too. Um, let's hop into some of the um, meeting options, though, um, for when you're actually joining a Teams meeting. So we'll kind of do like a like a mini dry run, if you will. So before you hop into a meeting, there's lots of customization that you can do um, as far as your background filters are concerned. You've got some additional settings for um, device options. This is where you can make adjustments to computer audio setup, maybe you want to call in from your phone instead of your computer. Um, there's even options too of like don't use audio or room audio, um, which we might get a little confused about. But say for instance, I am on um, a Teams call on my phone and I'm like, you know what? We need to share a document because talking about it is not um, as efficient as actually like working on it together. So Maybe I'll hop onto the Teams call on my computer, maintain my audio connection on my phone. Um, that would be like a good use case for something like that. So you've got options to say the least. Um, and then once you're actually in a Teams meeting, you've got additional features like breakout rooms. If you've got maybe like a brainstorming session, I know we've used that a few times. Those are pretty cool. Um, you can take meeting notes. Um, and then you've got meeting recording and transcription options too. Uh, new features are being regularly added within Microsoft Teams to Teams meetings. Um, transcription specifically were something that were added um, just within this past year. And I know that's, that's a great feature, especially if you've got a long meeting, you're talking about a lot of dense or content heavy um, conversation or discussion. It's, it's great to be able to reference a transcript to um, recall certain points that were brought up or um, discussions that took place. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I, I like, um, it, it's really quick and easy to join a pre-scheduled Teams meeting through that calendar feature because it's just literally one click away. That's, I think, a, a major efficiency on our side. It prevents you from having to go into Outlook, click on the calendar, open the calendar invite, click on the link to join the meeting. Neither is necessarily difficult, 
Um, but it is a quick and easy way to join the meeting and join the meeting quickly. Um, mm -hmm. One, before you jump through, Caroline, there's one question yeah. that I wanted to mention, sorry, on the calendar front. They said, um, can you see other team members' calendars in the team's calendar? And I think when you look at just that initial calendar view, um, you can't, but if you will, Caroline, for me, go and like create a new meeting. Just hit that new meeting for me. And then uh, the scheduling assistant, there is a, if, if she were to type in my name or if you wanted to look at other people's calendars and availabilities, you'd be able to add those people in here um, and it'll show if they're available or not. Um, mm -hmm. So that's, that's another way of doing it. The same kind of thing. Yeah. And and once again, quite similar to Outlook. Um, I know in some trainings, we've actually done like a side-by-side -side view of like scheduling um, a meeting in Outlook and how it automatically pops up within Teams. So um, there's definitely a lot of overlapping functions between like the two applications, if you will, for scheduling meetings. It's a great question. Mm -hmm. we'll, just, we'll discard that. Okay, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna hop right into the next, um, tool right here, which is calls. Um, we'll keep this pretty simple because it's pretty straightforward. And um, the call feature is similar to really any phone or calling application. Functions like a phone book where you're going to see a list of contacts, a history list of who has been incoming, outgoing, or even missed. You've got some um, different options here too to filter even these based on name or number if you're looking for a specific person that you've been um, communicating with. Um, these phone calls can be um, with video or without, depending on which icon you want to click on. Um, and at the bottom of this um, middle portion of the screen here, too, there's some additional settings for even forwarding calls or seeing what um, audio tools you have connected um, for your, you know, phone or video um, history. Um, and then, of course, within um, this section of Teams, too, you do have the option to immediately call up a person, or if you have the ellipsis, um, you can also chat with a person through the calling app or um, remove from you or even add the contact, maybe like your speed dial list or something like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I'll tell you, I, I barely like pick up my cell phone and just call people naturally through my cell phone these days. I always call them through Teams, coworkers meaning um, through Teams, through the desktop application, or I have the Teams app on my phone too, and it, it does everything just the same. So um, for quick ad hoc calls, I simply click that call or video feature right in the chat section uh, with that person, and it's just very, very simple. Um, now I would like to transition us because probably one of my favorite features within Teams, um, but I am curious before we jump into it, I'm gonna throw up another polling question. I'd like to know um, how you all collaborate with coworkers on a live document, if you do at all. Are you using email, back and forth email, uh, Google Docs, Sheets of some sort, um, Dropbox, Teams, or, or other? And the reason I ask this question is because, like I said, it's probably one of my favorite features is the files and file sharing in Teams. Um, the marketing department was using Google Docs before, and to collaborate on live documents. It was really just for the uh, marketing team because the operations wasn't in there, finance wasn't in there. Um, so it wasn't a great collaborative tool across the board. Um, but yeah, just very curious to see how you all are, are sharing documents and doing, if you can do live um, edits together in one document. So let me close down this poll and share with you the results. It does look like email is actually the um, top way that people are, are sharing documents back and forth, which is no surprise. I mean, that's actually very, very typical um, in, in today's workforce, but I will tell you, it is one of the things I love about Teams and Teams came in second there um, because you can do those live shares um, and live document edits. Um, and so Caroline, why don't we, why don't we dive into that a little bit and show the group um, what that looks like in Teams? Yeah, most definitely. So active collaboration on documents is it's a great feature in Teams, like uh, Megan pointed out. And it's 
really where team shines, in my opinion, um, with file sharing, what options it brings to the table in terms of collaborating and sharing various documents with your colleagues, um, even across departments or across units. So um, within Teams, you've got um, some different options for even opening files. If you want to edit um, either within Teams, within the application, you don't even have to leave Teams to be able to edit a Word document. Uh, but maybe you like to have a little bit of separation. Uh, maybe you like to have a little bit more of um, formatting functionality. And so that, you know, I would recommend using like the desktop app. Um, or you can even um, open it within a web browser too. So you've got a lot of options with that. Um, even within the um, files tool within Teams, you've got different options for viewing either the most recent documents you've been working on, or if you select Microsoft Teams, you'll get a picture of all the documents you've got access to everywhere, which might be a little overwhelming. Um, as you saw on my, um, my team screen earlier, I'm a part of quite a number of different teams. So there's a lot of file sharing, editing, collaboration all over the place. So it can be a little hard to um, remember, okay, was it in this team, in this channel, in this folder? Go to the files tab and um, you'll be able to see not only, um, you know, most recent activity um, in terms of like when it was last modified, who modified it, and even the location for where the document or the file might be located. So um, all good things to point out with this. Um, you can also even see maybe downloads where um, maybe your files are being stored in terms of your cloud storage that you've got connected to Teams. Um, and then um, I'm trying to think anything else that I would point out with this, but um, this is a great way to um, maybe like take yourself back a level from your team if you're looking for a specific file that um, you want to edit or collaborate on. Um, and then if you do hit this ellipsis too, um, I also want to point out this copy link option. I use this quite regularly if um, somebody's asking for like, hey, where was that document located? Instead of like messaging them out, like, hey, did you check this team? I think it might be in this channel. If you're able to find the document and access it it's, um, quickly, um, you can just share a link to them. That way they can click it and go directly inside and do whatever they need to with things. Yeah, and I think one of the other things that I really like about the live documents uh, and live meaning that I can be in it at the same time as Caroline and editing it at the same time as Caroline. Um, you, if you want to use the at function, you can do at and type in Caroline Wood or wh whoever um, the person is that you want to be alerted about the comment. If you're working directly in a document and you need their help with something, you want them to read something, um, you want them to answer a question, whatever the case may be, you can use that at feature. Um, and actually it'll alert your teammate via email um, that that comment was made and directed towards them and then they can click directly from that email straight into the document and, and respond in any way, shape, or form or make the edit to the document that you need. So again, just another um, helpful communication piece and also um, collaboration tool to get the information that you need and get it quickly. Yeah, and Megan, you brought up a great point, too, with the notifications kind of across um, different connected platforms, because that can be really great to be able to connect with people who might not be in Teams all the time, but that is also based on the notifications that they've got set up. So that's a great segue into talking about some of the settings and customization options you might have within Teams. So. I'm going to move over here to this ellipsis um, kind of once again, general like navigation pane in the top right. Um, this is where you can access your settings and you can access this menu actually from quite a number of different locations if you just look for that gear icon. But we're going to run through some of these general um, settings as well as some of these other ones. So um, right here at the top um, under general, you've got some of your more aesthetic settings for how you want to set up your personal experience, user experience in Teams. So if you want to set it to a dark mode where you like things a little bit more um, blacked out for visual purposes. Um, how do you want the application to open when you start your, uh, your computer every day? How do you want um, the chat to function? Do you want it just within the main window of Teams or maybe you pop up or pop out <laughs> to a different window? You've got a lot of customization options in here too. 
Um, even for like out of office settings, you can schedule that within Teams. Moving down into accounts, um, this is where you can view um, your various Teams accounts if you have multiple. I only have one, but say for instance, you work um, quite closely with other organizations or companies, you might have multiple Teams accounts. So this is where you'll be able to see um, all of the ones that you're affiliated with. And you can simply toggle between them um, for whatever reason. Maybe it is for security purposes. Maybe their Teams is more locked down um, in terms of file sharing and access. And you need to actually be um, synced to that account to look at those files or access any of those communications. So um, something of note, you might have multiple Teams accounts. Um, the next feature here, too, this is where we get into privacy, and you can adjust Maybe your do not disturb settings, blocking contacts, um, read receipts if you want to um, be able for other people to see whether if you read messages or not. Um, moving right along into notifications, as I brought up earlier, um, this is where you can set up how you get notified about various comings and goings and activities in Teams like uh, chat messages, your meetings, or reminders for meetings, et cetera. Um, one thing that's um, really nice to have is some of these notifications for missed activities to where you do get that email that hits your inbox if um, a certain period of time has gone past, you haven't been tuned into Teams too much, but you're really tuned into your inbox, um, you'll get a notification that, hey, maybe Megan has sent me a chat message and I need to hop into Teams to figure out what she might need help with or what I need to work on or something like that. Um, Moving right down here, so with the notifications, you've got further customization options for anything and everything going on with your chat, your meetings, and your calls. Um, you might be involved in some really chatty um, little Teams groups. So maybe you want to adjust like how many times you get pings or notifications about people trying to get a hold of you. So you've got a lot of options there for, for your notifications. Devices, I brought this up earlier when it comes to setting up how your video and your audio are connected within Teams for hopping into meetings. Uh, this is where you can really go in and kind of troubleshoot everything that you've got set up. Say you've got a new pair of AirPods that you want to make sure get connected every time you hop into a meeting. I would recommend going in here, kind of running through um, the connection, make sure everything's um, synced correctly. Um, and you can also adjust maybe noise suppression, uh, maybe set up a different camera. If you've got something that is not built into your computer, you can make those adjustments there too. Um, another couple of new features I wanna point out is a brightness and soft focus. I think this was just added within the past like month or so. That was something we were playing around with the other week, like, oh, look, <laughs> you can't see any of my fine lines and wrinkles. So anyway, Teams is constantly adding new features to um, various aspects of the platform, which is um, always a positive thing, in my opinion, to see that they're actively working to optimize Teams in a lot of different ways. Um, and then you've also got um, some different app permissions here, too. You can control what apps can access. Um, when you're using Teams, um, and this could be a default uh, for your convenience or based on like admin settings that are um, according to like in, um, at a higher level, <laughs> if you will. Um, captions and transcripts, um, you can toggle this off and on for your meetings. Um, I know I saw a question in there earlier about how the accuracy of transcripts. Um, I can't give you a specific percentage. I just know from personal experience they are pretty accurate and I have used them and it's a great tool to have, especially as I said, for like those longer meetings um, to where maybe some people or you aren't taking active notes. You've got that um, kind of data and information on hand to reference for future use. Um, moving right along, you've got some dish, uh, additional options for um, file opening, whether it's default to, to always open within Teams, you can set this on kind of a um, higher level, like across the board, any file opens. And then um, once again, additional options for um, some of your call settings. As you saw, these settings are very similar to what you saw beforehand in the actual um, call tool. So you've also got um, those options within like higher level general settings too. 
and that's all I've got for um, for the general setting. So you saw a lot of features, you saw a lot of options for customizing your experience um, within Teams. And another thing I want to bring up is customization on the app level too. So get excited, everybody. We're going to hop into app integrations over here. So this can be really exciting in Teams. It can also be kind of overwhelming because Teams can integrate with Quite, quite a number of different applications. I mean, anything from LinkedIn to HubSpot, we use that and it's actually amazing. Um, I mean, you can even sync in, sync your YouTube account if you wanna have videos connected directly to like a Teams channel for a quick reference for education. Um, say you wanna look into productivity tools to connect to one of your Teams channels because you're working on like an ongoing or even long-term project with colleagues. Um, there's a lot of, of tools that are available for you to um, connect directly into Teams where you don't have to hop between different platforms, don't have to have different web browser windows open. You can do it all in one location. So be aware that not all aspects of an application may sync with Teams. It could simply be um, one feature or like the chat function or something. Um, my biggest tip would to not be um, get too lost in everything and start delving into all kinds of apps and all kinds of tools because they sound cool and maybe I want to do, um, I don't know, this productivity tool and have like a timeline for projects that are due with this other chat feature. Um, you might find that Teams actually covers all of your communication, file sharing, project management um, in itself with um, simple Teams features that are like built into the platform. Um, like I said, Microsoft is continually updating Teams with new features and functions. So um, I challenge you all to look for those updates and notices about some of those feature rollouts and uh, experiment with Teams a little bit. Um, don't be afraid to poke around for some of these new tools. Some of the updates are a bit subtle. Uh, I pointed out like that soft focus earlier, like I don't remember seeing any sort of an email or um, notice from Teams because I do get those emails that come in from um, from Microsoft about like updates and I don't remember seeing anything about it. I think we like stumbled across it when we were in a meeting. We were like, wait a second. I think we were playing with the background settings. It was like, what is that? So um, poke around the platform, uh, check things out, figure out um, maybe what's what works for you, what efficiencies you're trying to find with the platform, and um, yeah, explore. It can be a really fun tool to use, especially if you get buy-in and you get your team all working within the same platform, because that way um, you will definitely find efficiencies if everybody's kind of um, running the same boat or rowing the same direction, if you will, in terms of like file collaboration and, and like chat tools too. So um, I know one um, integration I wanna point out that's been really great for us, I think I mentioned earlier is HubSpot. Um, we have it synced with Teams and it's really great to be able to see notifications um, about HubSpot activity over on the side because it's a separate application. Um, when I'm working on like a different document in Teams, I'll get like a HubSpot notice of, you know, activities going on. So then I know to hop over to HubSpot and give, um, you know, whatever's going on some of my attention. So I'll, I'll close with that, Megan. I could probably go on for days about all kinds of stuff that I find interesting with Teams. Well, we definitely could, uh, but unfortunately, we only have about six minutes left. So I want to throw up our, our last polling question as we get transitioned here to go into our live Q&A section. Um, how can we help you achieve success? Please uh, select an option on the screen if you'd like to be followed up with. Um, Caroline, just want to thank you for the in-depth uh, look at Microsoft Teams and its high-level features. I've been working to try and answer as many questions as I can on this side, and then we are going to get to some live here in the next five minutes or so um, so that we can do that. If you haven't submitted your question yet and you want to, please do that in the, the chat section at this moment in time. Um, there was one question which I can address while I'll leave that question up or, or while I'll leave the poll up for a quick minute, but they asked, um, how do you add your picture to the bubble at the top? And I think many times it's tied to Active Directory. I know ours at least is tied to Active Directory and managed by our 
IT department, our internal IT department. Um, however, if if there's not that sort of lockdown or stipulation, you can probably just go to your settings and um, click on the image and, and edit it there. But sometimes that is locked down and then tied directly into Active Directory. Um, okay. Yeah, let Megan, me, once, once let you me, close the poll, I can actually um, show you how to do that <laughs> within Teams. Yep. Have, I, have I taken over the screen again? Yes, I have. So if you actually mm -hmm. click on your profile, go to Manage Account, um, and then you hover over your picture, you can click, click the little uh, camera icon, and you can go in and make those adjustments as needed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah and there's, another question there's things directly over from SharePoint. <laughs> I think my picture did. Yeah, go ahead, Megan. Next question. Sorry. Um, yeah, the other one that, that somebody asked was, how did you bring up all those applications? And I think this was when you were back in the team uh, portion and you had clicked the plus button. So as you can see on the left hand side of Caroline's screen, you can just click to the app. It's the second to last one above help. But if you're in a team directly, um, that plus button to the right hand side is how Caroline got the additional applications to show up that you can then add directly within a team or within a channel in a team. Yeah. Here's where you can go to add apps within a channel. And then you can select apps down here for apps, app options. Um, you've got manage your apps here where you can make some adjustments for specifically you know some of these are defaults you know it's like especially the the ones that are Microsoft owned and run um, some of these integrations though um, please be aware that you might need to work with that actual um, like account that you have like for instance um, our HubSpot in our integration, we had to work with our HubSpot account manager to actually get up and running for us because it was actually, I think, in like a beta mode. Um, so we had to work directly with the vendor to kind of set up the sync. And then we also had to work with our internal IT team as well to make sure everything was synced smoothly. So some of these might not be as simple as like a two click, boom, bam, now it's integrated you might need some additional support from um, internal IT, your admin, um, or even the, um, like the vendor that you're working with directly or um, the account um, that you've got with that application. Um, mm -hmm. And then you can also get to apps to, um, through this little ellipsis here. Um, that's another way you can access apps. And then just clicking that more apps, it simply takes you back to this like directly to the app page too, but um, they're regularly gonna, adding more to the stack. Go ahead, go ahead, Megan. I get off. I was gonna say I'm gonna I'm gonna stop you there because it's 11:58, but um, and I want to try to answer at least one more question because somebody was asking, can you screen share or document share during a video call? Most definitely. Um, so, oh, I wonder if I can do this in here. You can, most definitely. Um, and you've got an option to either share your screen or share your window. Um, and I think you can even do it within the chat tool too. So I'll pull up Jake right here. And then I think it's, yeah, I don't even have to be in a video call and I can share um, either the full like desktop, like your screen or a separate window. Um, and that's been a great option for um, a lot of the video calls that I've been on where we're talking about um, different documents or such that we're working on is the screen share function. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I appreciate that, Carolyn. And thank you everybody for all your questions. I know there were some that I didn't get to um, yet at this point in time, but that is all the time we have and we wanna be really cognizant of your all's time, make sure that everybody's on, on point for their next meeting if you have one. Um, but if you asked a question and we didn't get to it, we will follow up with you offline. As a reminder, these sessions are recorded and we'll send out a copy of the recording to your inbox within the next couple of days. If for some reason you don't see that, don't receive that, uh, feel free to go to our website at nekinit.com, click on resources, and the on-demand version will be there for any time that you would like to review it. 
Um, but with that, I just thank you so much, Caroline, for sharing your knowledge and expertise with the group today. And thank you everybody for joining us and participating and for all the questions, really appreciate that. Um, and we hope to have you join us again soon. Have a great day. Thanks everybody. Hope you got a little bit of something out of it that maybe you didn't know about Teams before, but um, great platform to work with. And um, yeah, I hope everybody has a great rest of the day. <laughs>